Never fear, Chef Nick is here. In this episode, I'm gonna show you how to install the brand new Leon Lee Galahad 2 LCD. Let's uh, see what's cooking. Before we jump in, I'm gonna answer some of the questions that you guys might ask about this cooler and how to install it in your system. First of all, this will fit on basically all Intel LGA sockets from 11.5X all the way up to the current 1700, as well as AM4 and AM5. So you're not gonna have any problems with that. As well as that, people will ask, can I install other fans on this? And the answer is yes, but I'm not sure why we'd want to, because you get these Infinity SL Uni fan things with it. As well as that, there's pre-applied thermal paste on here and you will need a USB header on your motherboard to use this cool up because not only is the screen gonna be plugged in, the controller for the fans requires its own. Now that's all out of the way, let's see what you get in the box with the new Leon Lee 2 Galahad LCD. Well, this is actually the Leon Lee GA2 LCD SL Infinity 360, but this guide will apply to all of these new Leon Lee coolers with the screen. First off, we've got the installation guide that we're just not gonna need because that's the whole point of this video, right? We've got all the mounting hardware you're going to require for all installations. Let's quickly take a look at that. We've got the back plate for Intel installation. We've got these little rubber washers. These are for Intel installations. We've got the AM4 and AM5 mounting brackets. We've got these nuts, which are different for AMD and Intel installations. We've got some thermal compound. We've got all of the cables for the pump top. We've got a USB type C cable that plugs into the pump top. There's also all the wiring that's required for the RGB controller. There's a micro USB to USB motherboard header cable in there, as well as the RGB extension cables if you wanted to use the controller for other RGB things. There's the RGB pass-through cable that's also included. We've got the Leon Lee controller itself for all of the fans. This has four inputs for four different RGB devices. You can see this supports PWM and three pin addressable RGB as well. The cooler itself is interesting on its own because it's got pre-installed fans and pre-applied thermal paste and all of the cables are pre-installed, so there's nothing you need to plug into the cooler whatsoever. And if we take a little bit closer look at that, you can see that these fans are indeed pre-installed and you just don't need to do it comes out of the box like that makes it very very easy the connections are quite easy too there's a pwm fan cable and a three pin addressable rgb cable it also has 45 degree rotary fittings kind of like custom water cooling which is a nice addition as well as that as mentioned pre-applied thermal paste and there's a cover on the cold plate so you don't accidentally touch it let's get into installation let's start with intel based installations the installation for this is probably one of the easiest we've seen for any aio First of all, we're going to need the back plate for Intel installations. And the way I recommend usually doing this is laying the back plate on a flat surface if the motherboard's out of your case, and then lowering the motherboard onto the back plate. And the bolts for this back plate are pre installed, so you don't need to do anything. Locate four of the rubber washers, let's call them rubber washers, and then you want to slide them onto each of the bolts that are on the back plate and rinse and repeat that process until all of the washers are installed. And that's it for Intel installation. This is all of the mounting hardware required for AIM-4 and AIM-5 installations. Again, one of the easiest ever. Remove the stock mounting hardware on your motherboard and you're wanting to install the included bracket. Now you'll notice it says CPU and an arrow. Now you'll need to face that direction towards the CPU itself just because that's the correct orientation. And all you're wanting to do is use the bolts that come with your motherboard and the backplate on your motherboard and just reinstall them to install the brackets that come with the Leon Lee cooler. Super duper easy installation. Just rinse and repeat that process until you've got the other side on with the CPU arrow facing in and you're good to go. From here on out, both Intel and AMD installations are mainly the same. The only difference here is the nut that you use for each installation. One has four dots on it, the other one doesn't, but I'll show you that as we go. We'll start off with installing the radiator at the top of the case. This is the Lancool 216. Basically, you'll want to pass
pass the fan cables and the RGB cables through to the backside to make it a little bit easier. You could remove the top of the case for this case, but just for demonstration purposes, because that's what this whole video is, we're going to do it this way because, you know, it might work for you. Also, the order of this isn't super important, but I would usually recommend installing the radiator first. And once you've aligned the radiator, you can then hold it with your hand. You want to locate the 12 screws that come with the cooler. Optionally, if you want to use washers, they're also included. It just depends on your case and the size of the cutouts. And what I usually do is fasten one of the corners for the radiator. Then you'll want to fasten the one diagonally on the opposite end of the cooler. So the cooler is then held in place. And then get the rest of the screws and washers if that's what you want to do and rinse and repeat that process until all 12 screws are then installed. Now is a good time to remove the plastic cover from the cold plate to expose the pre-installed thermal paste. Now, as mentioned, the difference between these are the AMD bolts have four dots, the Intel ones don't. However, mounting is the same because the bracket on the cooler does not change anywhere in the installation. Basically, you want to lower the cooler onto the IHS, use the appropriate bolts. So Intel has no dots, AMD has the four dots, and then you can either finger tighten one in, and then I would usually fasten up the one diagonally to hold the cooler into place. And then rinse and repeat the process, but don't tighten it up all the way just yet. Just make sure it's held into place because you you will require a little bit of jiggling so it aligns correctly. And once you've done it and got it aligned correctly, fasten it into place, but do not over tighten this because you'll just hate life. Now you'll notice there is a four pin PWM fan cable hanging off the pump top. You want to locate a pump fan header on your motherboard and then plug that cable into the pump fan header. It will be labeled something like this depending on your board, but that's basically the go. Next, locate the USB-C to motherboard USB cable. And what we're going to do is plug in the USB-C side first. I'm going to show you how to do this a couple ways. First of all, locate the USB-C port on the side of the pump top and then just plug it in like a normal USB-C cable. I'll show you this again from a different angle just so you can see it a little bit better. Yeah, plug it in and we should be good to go. Then locate the motherboard header side and then locate a USB 2.0 motherboard header and then pass the cable up and through to the front of your system and then plug that cable in. While we're plugging in USB things, let's plug in the cable for the RGB and fan controller. Locate this micro USB to USB header cable. Again, we're wanting to locate another available USB motherboard header. Then we're going to plug that cable in to the motherboard header and away we go. And we'll plug in the other end a little bit later. Next up, we're going to locate the controller itself and we'll start by plugging in the fan and RGB cables. Now these only plug in one way. I would suggest plugging them into the first location on the controller. Basically, plug in the RGB cable, it clips into place. I'll show you this again from another angle just in case you couldn't see it going in. And then we'll do the same thing with the PWM fan cable. Just plug it into the first location. I'll show this again from another angle, just so it makes a little bit more sense. And then that's it. We're plugged in and ready to go. Locate this pass-through PWM and pass-through RGB cable in case you want to use it. It is optional. We're going to plug this end in first. You will see the connector for it on the bottom of the RGB controller that we just plugged in and plug it in and it only goes in one way and it should look a little something like this. Next up, we're going to plug in the three pin five volt addressable RGB cable that's on there. Locate a three pin five volt addressable RGB header on your motherboard and plug it in. Next up, we've got the PWM fan cable. This is for fan speed control. If you're wanting to use it this way, locate another PWM fan header on your motherboard and then plug that cable in and you should be good to go. We're going to plug in that micro USB cable, locate the USB header on the controller and plug the cable in and it should only plug in one way. It's not USB-C. Lastly, we need to plug in some power. There is a SATA power cable that comes with the controller. Locate a SATA power cable from your power supply and plug it in and we should be good to go. Optionally, if you wanted to mount the controller in your case somewhere, this is a magnetic strip. It's also double-sided tape. You can stick that to the back side of the controller. There is a place for it and yeah, stick away. 
I guess. I mean, while we're here, we should visit our friends over at Peel Corp and get that bling bling unsheathed and ready to go. And we'll take a look at software. But if you turn your system on and if it all went to plan, it should look a little something like this. Nice. The first thing you wanna do is go to the Leon Lee website and download L Connect 3. You will see that there's two versions of L Connect 3 here. You'll want the one at the bottom for the GA2 LCD L Connect 3. Slightly different version and the other version just will not work. Once you've downloaded L Connect, you'll then want to launch the installer and go ahead and install L Connect. There's nothing to do for configuration here. You just click next a bunch of times and it installs the program. Now we can have some fun with L Connect. You'll see a few different things in L Connect that will give you your CPU load, your RAM load, your GPU load, and all the thermals for basically everything that you'll want to know. But in terms of configuring this new cooler, you've got two options. So first of all, if we click the GA2 LCD tab on the left-hand side of L Connect, it'll show all of the effects that you can apply. So first of all, it'll just have a Lee and Lee logo as the default image on the screen. You can add effects to the default picture. It basically just shows you all of the included effects. So here's a nice little fireworks effect. That looks really cool. That reminds me of that Fantavision game on PS2. You'll notice that the refresh rate on the screen is really nice too. You can see that out of all the coolers with screens on them, this probably has the coolest built-in effects. I would say that this is definitely very, very cool. And the good thing about all of these themes is they all have their own configuration as well. Whatever you want, basically, you can tune all of these effects. There's quite a lot you can do. And I think this on its own is pretty cool. Like a lot of other coolers on the market with screens, you can almost do anything with the screen. So I'll just show you a couple animations. So you can upload MP4s, GIFs, PNG files, JPEGs, whatever you like. And you can also screen record. I'll come back to that one. That's pretty cool. But just upload just a random GIF to the screen. You can see the refresh rate on the screen is really, really good. And the resolution of the screen is one of the better ones that we've seen. And I'm a big fan of the fact that the screen on this cooler is square and not round. So it gives you a couple more options for things to put on the screen. I kind of love this one, actually. <laughs> it's so good, it's so good. You can also do something that I think is quite cool too. You can add a screen recording and the way this works is let's say you had something else. You can move this box around to capture anything and hit record. And then we're done recording. Then we can import. And there you go, what we recorded from a web browser tab is right there on the cooler. Which means you can add almost any animation or any video that you like and it will look really good. Okay, let me show you a YouTube video. Oh, let's say I wanted to have that, I hit record. Hey, look at that, it's the same cooler in the video that I'm recording. That's really cool. And hey, that's actually kind of good. There you go. Maximum of three minutes as well. Right, and we import that. Look at that, there's a Gear Seekers video on the screen and it looks awesome. That is freaking cool. I, I love that so much. That is really, really cool. That's probably the best screen for a cooler I've seen because you can just pull whatever you want on it. That is great. The edge of the screen also has its own lighting effects that you can change too. I'll just quickly click through the ones that are included. You can really customize this as well, but as you can see, much like all Lanley RGB stuff, there is a lot of configuration here. A lot of different effects to look at. The other thing that you can configure with this cooler is you can change the fan speed. So you can make it quiet. You can also change the pump to either be a fixed RPM or PWM, completely up to you. And lastly, because this includes Infinity Uni fans, you have the configuration for all of the fans here as well. So all the normal stuff that we're used to seeing with Leon Lee coolers, you can go ahead, 
you can change everything. We've got a comprehensive guide on how L-Connect works. I'll link that in the description. So if you're wanting to know the intricacies of how all of the fan lighting is configured, I will link that video down in the description. That one's a really good watch because it shows you how to install all of the fans as well. Lastly, I wanted to show you the fan and pump control that is built into L-Connect because it is quite configurable these days. So it'll show what's connected to each of the ports on the controller itself. We've only got one fan frame connected to that and it's running at around about 750 RPM. You can select the fan size based on the fan that you have plugged in because they do have different rotational velocity. You can then change the fan curve down the bottom here and it applies that instantly. There's other little things you can do too. You can set the offsets here. You can basically do whatever you can do in the BIOS, except you can control the entire controller right here. So if we go fixed PWM, we can bump the pump speed up all of the way. You can hear that pump now, it's quite loud. Well, at least I can hear it. We can then switch back over to the fans and say, hey, this one's making a racket. We can drop this down a little bit. So there is quite a lot of control in L-Connect for your fans and pump as well. I think that's everything you need to know about the Leon Lee Galahad 2 LCD. And if Chef Nick helped you on your journey with installing this brand new cooler, let us know in the comments down below and let us know what your favorite thing is with this new cooler from Lee and Lee, and I think that's just about gonna do it. And if you like the music you heard here, that's me. I make all the music, it's available by clicking that little join button right down there, down below. Make sure you get yourself subscribed if this video helped you as well. Once again, thank you Sarah very much for watching. I'm Chef Nick, you peak, we seeking. I just wanted to see how loud that would sound. <laughs> Thanks for watching.